Hello, thanks for joining us for our late night newscast coming to you from Ali Dang's news centre in Seoul. I'm Mark Broom. Let's start with a look at Korea's expressways as the five day Chuseok Thanksgiving holiday winds down. Hundreds of thousands of Koreans who have spent the last couple of days in their hometowns to see family and perform ancestral rituals have been filtering back into the capital throughout the day. Seoul bound expressways have been congested for most of the day and uh, will remain so for the next couple of hours at least. The Korea Expressway Corporation says traffic volume is starting to thin out considerably though as you move later into the night. Setting off from the southern city of Busan, as you can see, it will take you around four hours and a half to get back to Seoul. From Gwangju in the southwest, expect to be in the car uh, for three hours or so. From Kangnung on the east coast, it will take you two hours and 20 minutes expressways in and out of the Korean capital are projected to be running pretty much as normal on Sunday. South Korea's top diplomat is on his way to New York to attend the 71st session of the UN General Assembly. Yoon byung se will meet with his counterparts from the United States and Japan on the sidelines of the assembly to discuss countermeasures against North Korea's recent nuclear test. Ji Myung-gil has the details. Seoul's Foreign Minister Yoon byung se will meet with U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and Japanese Foreign Minister Fumio Kishida on Sunday on the sidelines of the U.N. General Assembly. During their three-way meeting, the officials plan to formulate a coordinated response to North Korea's nuclear provocations, ahead of measures to be taken at the U.N. Security Council, including further sanctions against Pyongyang. Minister Yoon also plans to hold separate one-on-one -on -one talks with Kerry and Kishida. Seoul, Washington and Tokyo are pushing for tough new sanctions on Pyongyang after the regime conducted its fifth and largest nuclear test on September 9th. The blast was in defiance of UN sanctions that were tightened in March. The United States also wants China to do more to rein in its longtime ally. Last week, U.S. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter pressed Beijing to use its considerable sway over North Korea to curb its nuclear and missile development. China's cooperation is deemed vital as it's one of the five veto-holding permanent members of the U.N. Security Council and the main provider of food and fuel to the impoverished North. North Korea's Foreign Minister Lee Yong-ho is scheduled to deliver a keynote address at the U.N. General Assembly on September 24th. Arirang News. U.S. senators have introduced a resolution denouncing North Korea's fifth nuclear test and calling for tougher sanctions on the regime. Congressional records show Senator Benjamin Cardin brought in the resolution on Thursday local time, saying the North's nuclear missile provocations pose a major threat not only to the U.S., but also its allies in the region. The resolution condemns Pyongyang for continuing its dangerous provocations, focusing solely on the advancement of its nuclear missile capabilities while violating the human rights of its people. It urges North Korea to immediately and unconditionally abandon its nuclear missile programs and call on China to exercise its leverage over the North, including through aggressive enforcement of UN sanctions. It also calls for the UN Security Council to adopt additional and meaningful new measures against Pyongyang. South Korea's cash-strapped Hanjin shipping has been unloading freight in Spain and the United States, clearing the way for more of its ships to dock and get a frozen supply chain moving again. Two vessels, the Hanjin Spain and Hanjin Greece, have now finished unloading their cargo at ports in Valencia and in Oakland, California. Next week, at least three more Hanjin ships are expected to follow suit at other ports around the world. Currently, 34 Hanjin vessels are waiting to have their freight unloaded. Ports have refused to let the ships dock for fear their services would not be paid. Hanjin Shipping filed for receivership late last month in a Korean court and must submit a rehabilitation plan in December. New figures show South Korea remains one of the most dangerous places in the developed world to drive or be a pedestrian. Data from the OECD shows Korea has the second highest road fatality rate among OECD uh, countries. The number of Koreans killed on the road reached 101.4 per 1 million people in 2013. Korea is reading, although an improvement from 105 in 2011 and 119 in 2009 is much higher than the OECD average. 
Now, with around 50 days to go before Americans vote for the next president, a new poll has Hillary Clinton with a four percentage point lead over Donald Trump. The Reuters Ipsos poll, taken between September 9th to the 15th, showed 42% of likely voters supported Clinton, while 38% backed her Republican rival. Respondents took the survey after video surfaced of Clinton collapsing at a 9-11 memorial event in New York on Sunday due to what her campaign said was about a pneumonia. However, other polls released over the past couple of days show a much tighter race, with the latest LA Times poll even giving Donald Trump a six-point lead over Clinton. Trump has also closed the gap or even pulled in to the lead in the key battleground states of Ohio, Florida, Nevada, and Pennsylvania. Thailand has confirmed almost 280 cases of Zika since the turn of the year, prompting concerns the rise in numbers could deal a heavy blow to the nation's tourism industry. In the latest bid to contain the outbreak, authorities in Thailand say they will criminally charge homeowners who fail to remove mosquito breeding grounds on their property. The government is reviving an old law allowing officials to order the removal of ponds or any areas with still water found to foster mosquitoes, which can, of course, uh, transmit the Zika virus. Anyone failing to clean up or remove ponds can face one month behind bars and a fine of up to 140 US dollars. Now, with the promise that future technology will be helpful and handy, many people have been eagerly waiting a time when artificial intelligence will become more of a part of our daily lives. But with rising concerns, AI could end up replacing humans in the workforce and perhaps even altogether. Five of the world's tech giants are working on establishing a standard of ethics around the creation of AI. Kim hye has a story. The world's five leading tech giants are trying to create a standard of ethics around artificial intelligence. According to the New York Times, researchers from Google's parent company Alphabet, Amazon, Facebook, IBM and Microsoft have been meeting to discuss issues like the impact of AI on jobs, transportation and even warfare. These discussions are taking place after the field of AI has made rapid progress in a range of areas from driverless cars and voice recognition to robots and weapon systems that could pose a threat to people's jobs and even their very existence. The specifics of what the five companies will decide or do are not yet known. But according to the New York Times, they have shared a memorandum and plan to announce a new organization, a so-called AI industry group, in two weeks. And their basic goal? To make sure that the focus of AI research is on benefiting people, not hurting them. One of the concerns among AI researchers has been the government making AI regulations. The general manager for IBM's Watson Artificial Intelligence Division, David Canney, said in an interview with the New York Times that there is a role for government and we respect that. The challenge is a lot of times policies lag the technologies. The importance of the industry effort can be seen in recent projects by Stanford University and MIT that study the social and economic impact of AI. As artificial intelligence technology advances rapidly, academics and industry researchers are moving fast to link the technological progress closer to socioeconomic policy issues. Kim Hye-sung, Arirang News. Fashion is not only a way to express oneself, it's a reflection of social and cultural changes. An exhibition right here in Seoul featuring 100 years of Korean fashion offers an interesting glimpse into history. Park Se-young tells us more. In the early 20th century, Western culture was making its way into Korea's Confucian society. Style-conscious men began to wear bowlers and fedoras instead of Korean traditional hats, and modern girls put on Western-style dresses and heels instead of hanbo. This exhibition in central Seoul is showcasing 100 years of Korean fashion from the 1910s to the present and features work by 60 designers. First-generation designers Choi kyung and Nora No, who got their start in the 1950s, added a Korean twist to Western fashion trends. In the 1970s, with their bell bottoms and acoustic guitars, designers expressed freedom. Color television and pop culture in the 80s brought riding pants and jackets with power shoulders. Since the 90s, fashion in Korea has made rapid progress with the Korean wave and is evolving into a style dubbed K-fashion. 
From fashion items worn by celebrities to clothes with stories behind them, the exhibition takes visitors through the changes in trend and atmosphere of a century of style. Koreans have great interest in fashion and are very style conscious, so we can see which trends were pulled from which time period. It's a very fun exhibition. Highlighting the past, present and future of Korean fashion and Korean history, Mode and Moments runs through September 22nd. Park Se-young, Arirang News. Now let's uh, wrap up our news bulletin with a look, a brief look at the weekend weather. Most of the central region is under partly cloudy skies tonight. It's going to be a fairly mild night though with the low dipping to 17 degrees Celsius in Seoul. Sunday will be cloudy and we'll see rain in some places as well, especially down south. Highs will range in the mid to high 20s. With that, let's take a look at the weather in Korea and around the world. Well, those are the stories we have for you at this hour. For more of the latest, don't forget to check out the website, adirang.com forward slash news. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Goodbye.